फोर थ्री सर सर वी आर लाइव नाउ ओके थैंक यू गुड इवनिंग एंड वॉम वेलकम टू अनदर सेशन ऑफ एक्टिव लर्निंग सेशन फॉर फेलोज and in this session we have a topic uh, which is management of sequelae of septic hip and this is a very common problem in india because many a times the diagnosis is not made at the right time and that leads to a lot of problem in children and management of this condition is also very challenging because there are so many varieties and with growth so many issues are uh, coming up so today we are fortunate that dr anil agrawal for chacha nehru bal chikitsala cnbc new delhi is going to share uh, his experience with us he has a vast experience on this topic so the format of this session is initially we will have a short introduction about the topic by dr anil agrawal and after that we will have a case discussion in the case discussion we will invite fellows to speak on two important question what are the problems which they see in the case and what are the solutions or what are the options for solution we know that for such difficult situation we cannot have a one option so we will have a variety of options and after that uh, we have three experts professor thomas palokeran from cmc velour we have professor hitesh uh, from kmc manipal and we have nirmal raj gopinathan from chandigarh so they are going to share their views on the case and after that we will have dr anil agrawal to show his uh, like what he did for the case that we are going to see so with that short introduction now i invite uh, dr anil agrawal to share his presentation i request everyone to mute their cells so that there is no background disturbance over to you sir thank you good evening everyone this talk is basically intended for fellows and i welcome the fellows and their mentors to this talk and want their participation to make it fruitful i am sharing my screen okay is it visible yeah it's visible okay great so the learning point from today talk will be interventions in septic sequelae hip and something about the natural history as well before we enter into the game of how to manage things let's understand what's wrong with the hip so this is a section of a neonatal hip and you can see a large amount of cartilage which the bacteria loves also there is a growth plate and osseous tissue and on the other side also there is a acetabulum full of cartilage so this all three tissues the bacteria loves very much and enjoys so why is child's hip is so peculiar there is a large amount of cartilage as we have already seen there is a relatively lax capsule the physial plate is intracapsular and we must understand that it contributes 30% of the total femoral length and then there are end arteries and arteries how does the infection damage at joint okay these are the three mechanisms first is the direct damage by the infectious agent or the response generated to the bacteria or the toxin the tense uh, tense fluid which accumulates following the effect of sepsis can occlude vessels and produce ischemic effect the bone can get eaten and that can lead to pathological fractures so we can see different effects in different tissue if it is epiphysis and the physis you can have anything between uncomplicated recovery ankylosis physial arrest or when we come to later stages late degenerative changes femoral neck again starting from very simple uncomplicated recovery to osteomyelitis and pseudoarthrosis trochanter overgrowth growth arrest proximal femur uncomplicated removal recovery pathological fractures deformities and osteomyelitic changes there can be corresponding changes in the acetabular side also so what is septic sequelae hip septic sequelae hip is a sum total of different sides and the severity by which the infection has damaged them 
there is a common question which is often asked in the FNB exams and PG exams. Tom Smith arthritis. What is a Tom Smith disease? And practically, as soon as the fellow or a PG student sees the case of septic arthritis, he utters this word and gets trapped. So I was just wanted to clarify the things about Tom Smith arthritis. In 1874, Thomas Smith described a series of 20, 21 infants on which eight died and eight healed with, a, with severe deformities. Most of them were under six months of age. Please try to understand that arthrotomy was not the norm and the modern antibiotics which were available at this time were not available at that time. So he described a joint which was flail seen in postmortem studies. So what we exactly mean by Tom Smith arthritis is this is in a very young children, which is less adequately treated, in which there is a loss of proximal femur and which leads to a flailing. So before you label any septic arthritis case as a Tom Smith arthritis, please do remember what Tom Smith disease exactly means. Now we have several classifications related to septic C. coli. Foremost is the Choi, the others are Hunka, Forlin and Milani, and others also are present. So in choice classification, which is most properly used and used for comparisons, there are four rows and each row is again divided into two rows and each row has a description. I always find it as complicated as a brachial plexus chart and found it very difficult to remember. So a tip to understand things is that as you go down the ladder, their instability increases and the destruction increases. Last two rows are associated with instability. So first one is the reduced blood supply. Second one is related to physical abnormalities. Third is related to pathological fractures. And fourth is related to loss of head and neck. We will talk more about this as we discuss the cases. So to understand the classification, the first one is related to the blood supply. So you can have enlargements like coxa magna. You can have in the 2A, which is related to the physical abnormalities and head abnormalities, you can have coxa valga or coxa vera depending upon the symmetrical or asymmetrical physical closures. Type 3A is related to the pathological fractures in the neck. So you can have coxa vera with retroversion and pseudoarthrosis. You can appreciate the pseudoarthrosis over here. And the fourth variety is related to the loss. So we can have loss of the proximal femur, neck present, some component of the neck present, and no component of the neck present, which is also known as stick femur. There is some, uh, some, uh, some development or some uh, modification which occurred in the Choi classification over time. When the Choi classification was described in 1990, he just mentioned 4A as a small medial remnant of the neck. And this particular deficiency of the Choi classification was highlighted by many other observers like Dorisa. Later in an article by 2005, which was a review article, he, Choi modified his definition to include, include as reasonable size of cartilage cap over the ossified remnant to make up for this category. So 4A now includes a dislocated femoral head as well. So that's, let's come to the management part. Broadly, when we uh, uh, see a case of septic sequelae, we see three things, containment, capital head, and femoral shaft, and the interlinkage between them. With containment, you must understand that it also includes the alignment and the version. Other things to see clinically and radiologically are age of the child, whether the joint is painful or painless, stable or unstable, mobile or stiff, what are the demands of the child and the parents, how much is the shortening, and when you go for the imaging, look for the status of head and neck, whether the acetabular side is open or closed, what is the choy type, how is the bone stack, has the osteomyelitis healed, and then you arrive at a decision appropriate for that particular age. Okay. In the imaging workup, Basically, we have plain x-ray as the foremost. So I have written it as the topmost. You can have abduction views, internal external views. And if you want to demonstrate telescoping, you can do a push-pull views. Below one year of age, when the OC head is not ossified, you can do, do an ultrasound. And 
dynamic ultrasound is also an option. Arthrography, which we commonly use in DDH cases, might not work because the capsule is often fibrous and might not give you accurate idea of the joint outline. CT will give you the 3D profile and MRI will guide you more about the osteomyelitis, pseudoarthrosis and the physical status. Just to complete the topic, in the CHOI-1, because we haven't included a case of CHOI-1, so there will be enlargement of the head and what you need to do in the management part is to observe or put the child in an abduction brace and several abduction, several types of abduction braces are available. Okay. So this was our first case in which we have given a case of a 10 year old child. And now I hand over the talk to Dr. Dhiren. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Dr. Anil for setting up the stage. Now I request the fellows from uh, KMC Manipal to tell us about a few things about the case. Like uh, we saw the x-rays. So the first is, what is a choy type? What are the problems which you anticipate from the x-ray? And then the second part we want to know is like, what are the options available? So that is what like, we don't want a one answer. We want what are the options available? And which option uh, do you recommend for this particular case? So, yeah, who will be taking lead from KMC Manipal? So, the Dr. Siddharth, I would like to answer the question. Yeah, uh, please, based on, the X -ray, based on the X-ray, it looks like uh, Choi uh, 2A with a coxal. Yeah, okay. Someone's... Yeah, so it's Choi 2A. Very good. So what are the options, uh, sorry, what are the problems you anticipate in this case? Based on this, uh, the clinically, there is a 2 centimeter shortening. Uh, there is right. severe cox aura, which may lead to an abductor. I think the child will have an abductor lurch when he walks. And uh, range of motion uh, in the photo that was there, I think the action rotation uh, is not there. And abduction is also restricted. And adduction may be more than abduction based on the X-ray. Uh, the sentence line is also broken and uh, there is a proximal migration of the greater trochanter based on the coxa, because of the coxavara. So based on these problems, uh, the management I would like to uh, think of is uh, a valgus osteotomy and a greater trochanteric apophysiodesis. Uh, that will resolve the coxavara and probably give a little bit of length, correct the abductor lurch to an extent and the epiphysiodesis of the trochanter can prevent further uh, proximal migration to the femur. So, valgus osteotomy may help. Okay. And uh, do you recommend valgus osteotomy at this stage or uh, you would like to wait for a few years before you go for valgus osteotomy? I think it can be done at this stage because the age of the child will be 10 years. Uh, right. There is a... Uh, so, it, maybe it is possible to be done now. Okay. Fine. Um, and uh, you have only one option for this case, and that's valgus osteotomy. Nothing else. Uh, you don't think of anything else. Um, for this case, I think uh, uh, if you have a frog lateral view, uh, it be. But the frog lateral is not available. Like it's the, not available. Like so, very good. So, what you are thinking? What you are expecting to look at uh, frog lateral view, and why, and how it's going to change the management? Uh, in the AP, uh, the pseudoarthrosis is not there. So maybe if there is a pseudoarthrosis, the management will change, which will be evident also on frog lateral. So okay, good. So good we want frog lateral view for looking at the whether there is a pseudoarthrosis or not. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So uh, let me give you a two options. The first option, there is a pseudoarthrosis. Then what will you do? And let's talk of a second possibility that there is no pseudoarthrosis. So what will be the difference in the management? If there is a pseudoarthrosis, we we'll like to augment the valgus osteotomy with the bone graft, either from a fibula, and so that the pseudoarthrosis can heal and along with the valgus osteotomy. So it will also help the healing. So, along so you will add on the fibular graft to increase the vascularity? Yes. Okay, good. Yeah. So now let's uh, have the opinion of uh, Nirbal Raj. Dr. Nirbal Raj, do you agree with what Siddharth said or you have a 
different uh, view on this uh, i totally said that actually he wonderfully put all the point uh, including the the vera the abductor lurch that is because of the proximal migration of the trochanter and uh, even lengthening limb like discrepancy uh, and uh, it's i think 2.5 cm shortening at this point of time isn't it dr anil yes. yes yes so i think i think approximately can, uh, like, approximately 2 cm 2.5 cm i i agree with siddharth actually at this point of time at 10 years of age i think valgus osteotomy will be the thing i will be doing preferring for this case and depending upon further uh, progress i will uh, uh, think about any limb length equalizing procedure at a later date which may not be required in this case but i will sure keep a watch for this patient but i agree with siddharth on all the points okay. and uh, dr thomas what do you think no i think i think uh, he, both of them have said the correct things uh the valgus osteotomy will give you two point little length and will improve your abductor power so i think the 2.5 cm thing can be taken care of the only thing is i, I was wondering whether it's anteverted or retroverted so that we will have to take into account when you do the valgus okay uh, so i have a just a practical know, question the time of operation uh yes so you will look for the var yeah. version uh not preoperatively but uh, during surgery you yeah. try to look for the version so like that is making the neck uh, the a, maximum length uh, see. yeah either yeah at profile or you can put a wire along the neck and read it off the, from the thigh okay right but i think the valgus uh, osteotomy is a good option okay good hitesh would you like to add anything to this yeah uh dr anil can we see the x ray again sure sir one of the important things which uh, practically we need to take before taking the uh, valgus osteotomy we need to see about acetabulum and many times there would be acetabular dysplasia and uh, particularly uh, i will address if you can see on a both side there is a acetabulum is not equal on a both side there is acetabular dysplasia so we need to decide how much adduction whether the hip is getting subluxated because severe coxa vara like this the neck shaft angle is very less when we are going to correct the pulley there is a hip may become unstable and uh, that we need to address it if it is was if it is there along with the valgus osteotomy we need to do correct the acetabular dysplasia Okay, uh, Siddharth, I have a yeah, Siddharth, I have a question for you. Like, yes. uh, how much amount of valgus you will try to achieve in this case? Let's say that this is seventy degree neck shaft angle. Then, up to what angle you will go? In this case, seventy degrees, thirty uh, degrees of correction, uh, we can aim. Uh, uh, will you not compromise the adduction? postoperative adduction after that it may reduce the adduction but uh, the abduction will improve the arc of movement will improve so uh, it may help in the abduction but probably 30 to okay. 40 degrees uh, what we'll achieve we can try to achieve uh, uh, the question i have is like how the arc of movement will increase usually when we say uh, we are doing an osteotomy we are considering that there is a change in the Uh, arc, but the total range of movement remains the same. Why do you think yes. that in this case the arc of movement will uh, increase? Because of the mechanical problem here, the adduction will be more than abduction because of the severe coxa vara. So when we uh, do the valgus osteotomy, the trochanteric impingement on the pelvis will reduce. So though the movement, the abduction will increase relatively, and the adduction will reduce. So okay. right. that's how I think the arc will improve. and uh, will you consider doing something to the trochanter to uh, make it uh, more mechanically uh, stable or like uh, giving up better length to the abductors uh, at this age at 10 years probably since there is 6 uh, years uh, probably will consider apophyseal dissection later we'll observe and might need a uh, neck lengthening or a tra trochanter transfer later uh, based on how he behaves 
Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Siddharth. Thank you for a wonderful uh, discussion on the topic. So now, uh, Dr. Anil, can you take it further? Okay, yes. So this was the case shared to the fellows, and this was the another view shared with the along with the first X-ray. So this already Dr. Deeran has taken up. So let's up the let's take up the case. So as correctly pointed out by Siddharth. this comes under the category of joint 2b where there is affection of the epiphysis metaphysis and the physis and you get progressive coxa vera so the problem associated with are related to the containment we have a intact head to acetabulum relationship and head to femur relationship okay so to complete the topic i have put all the things together so if there is a coxa vera to we will do a valgus osteotomy if there is a coxa valga we will do a cox varus uh, osteotomy the other other types of uh, problems encountered in joint type 2 are hip subluxation head dysplasia acetabular dysplasia and head irregularities and accordingly the procedures are acetabular procedures femoral procedures surgical dislocation and osteochondroplasty and this is one example of osteochondroplasty in which you do surgical dislocation and shape the head as best as you can for severe coxa brava and abductor insufficiency several neck lengthening procedures are described and distal trochanteric transverse is also used so this is wagner osteotomy this is mosher's osteotomy all of these are neck lengthening procedures this is papa velsio l osteotomy this is distalization of trochanter for abductor insufficiency and this is lateralization now back to the case which we were discussing i give you a brief history of this this child was brained at 3 years of age and these were the x rays available with the child at age 4 years okay can you appreciate something happening over here in this region looks like a pseudo arthrosis to me okay so when we see infection 7 years post infection okay this is the range of the motion you have rightly pointed out there are problems with the abduction and external rotation and this is how the child walks which is related the limp is related probably both to the shortening somewhat to the shortening as well as abductor in insufficiency because of the coxa vera so we did a both mri and ct in this case to find out the antiversion angle and 3d images are here uh, with so there is antiversion when we did mri a strange thing came to our uh, notice that the physis was relatively intact whereas in joy type 2a the physis is affected and we had a previous x ray which showing a pseudo arthrosis so are we dealing with something different are we dealing with a 3a type or a 2b type okay so physis was relatively intact but made us think in this way this manner was physis was relatively intact okay we had a pre immediate post operative x ray one year of post sepsis x ray one year after the sepsis was drained however the things against 3a 3 ever that there was no severe antiversion present and version abnormalities were less in this case planning our planning besides mri and ct scan involved obtaining all these x rays like adduction abduction external rotation internal rotation and also there was a mixed picture which showed the best position in which the head was contained in which is not given here also a scanogram to find out the limb length discrepancy and any alignment problems so this is what we did we tried to perform a valgus osteotomy as all of you mentioned but we could correct only till 40 degrees we could produce only 40 degrees of a uh, valgus osteotomy and we derotated the limb by 10 degrees so was it misjudgment 
was our implant choice not okay no this wasn't this way because as you can see when we do a adduction views we can only because of the abduction contracture the limb could be adducted only this much and this was 40 degrees beyond this we couldn't abduct and it produced a it produced a abduction contracture so we have to limit our osteotomy degrees to 40 degree what we did this when we did this we just fixed it whatever abduction was available put a contralateral eight plate to balance because the child was already 10 years and physis was not seemingly so healthy so we put up and we couldn't achieve a very significant amount of alcohol so we put a contralateral eight plate in this started we released the abductors slightly loosened the abductors at the time of primary op operation started adduction exercises we knew that we haven't produced a good valgus correction in this case so we took up the case again but this time we wanted to revise our implant the choices were the uh, lcp pediatric hip plate okay but this was a costlier option and the patient was unwilling to afford it just then the posicon came and this video it was an online conference and we were showed this technique in which a simple cane nail can do the same trick so we tried this in our case and these are the immediate post operative radiographs and this time we were the d rotation was already corrected so we just aimed at the next shaft angle and it could we could correct it to 135 degrees this time any further thing the opposite side was 150 anything further again produced problems so union occur within two months there were no complication like avian were seen although it is a too short a follow-up to say such things this is the child abduction at almost uh, nine or ten months follow-up this is the child walk We recently removed the implant in this particular case, and these are the final radiograph for this particular case. Okay, uh, shall we have one or two opinion? Uh, so, oh. first of all, I would like to ask uh, Dr. Dirbal Raj, if this patient is at your institute, will you do the same thing or you would think differently? Uh, my implant choice will be different, sir. I will be using an angle blade plate here uh, because it gives a, a very good control of the proximal fragment and it allows me to do the amount of abduction I, I, I try to get. So my implant choice will be different here. Otherwise, the procedure is going to be the same. Okay, so you would use a 135 degree angle blade plate? Yeah, 130 degree angle blade plate which is degree. available with us. Yeah, the width of the, the pediatric angle blade plate is around uh, one centimeter and it, it can be easily inserted into kids even of uh, uh, like six, eight, six years. So the, this kid would, uh, can be, uh, can, could have accommodated an angle blade plate. Otherwise, uh, I agree with the other things. Okay, right. Yeah, Thomas. First, I must compliment Dr. Anil on that excellent result. I just wanted to know how he did that uh, cane nail. Can he, can he, Anil, can you just tell us, walk us through that procedure? That but it's nail. given over here. It's ah, yeah, given yeah, over yeah. here. Yeah, but just tell yeah. me how you did it's, it. It's a slide directly from Posicon 2021. I saved it and you later first, used. You first no, but like, can you tell us like the what you did? Like first ah. you carried out an osteotomy yeah. or you made... You no, first, uh, first, first, first step is you have to insert two strong steamman pins into the right neck right. portion. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Before okay. that, ah. you have to do a templating to find out that where will your nail come out okay. when you exactly. have to produce an angle. Ah. Okay, you have to save the trochanter and that will determine that your distal hole, this hole, this hole. Uh -huh. okay. okay, so decide to decide this hole, you must calculate everything template beforehand. Uh -huh. okay. okay, so you always okay. go retrograde oh. okay. and come out over here instead of anti-grade. 
Okay. Then you do a wide dissection over here. Okay. This in this portion. Uh huh. Completely medialize it. Cut off a portion of the distal part. It over here and pass the nail back. It like we do, do a classical thing. K nail in an atrogate method. Yes. The anterior. Yes. Okay. No, no, not anterior. The retrograde. Retrograde nail pushed anterior. Okay. Right. Yeah. At this time. This time you have to push it from the top, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. The nail is inserted from this side. Ah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. But we are familiar okay. to a K nail implant. Mm -mm. So it's not it was not a difficult procedure for us. Okay. Did you and have to take a wedge seen. wedge below that thing where that the K nail is coming out at that base of the lesser trochanter? No. You may or at may not do it. Yeah, you ah. may or may not do it. We we did it because we want to do in a classical manner because we were doing it first time, but it might okay. not be necessary because the okay. cane holds okay. everything. It's, okay. it's a very snugly fitting and you are, when you are cutting it, you are in the isthmus area. So you have a hold over here as well as here. Mm. Okay. And That's the things nice. are done in, the, in a very low cost implant. Yeah. 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 Nice. Yeah, Dr. Anil, I have an apprehension like uh, we have a very small hole in the proximal fragment. Is it sufficient to uh, hold this uh, like the proximal fragment in position because so much muscle forces are working? So do you add on something after like hip spica or something traction? Yes, or... I, spica I give for three weeks. Sir. Three weeks okay. is a must. Right. right. For every right. implant, for every child, probably even after the plate, I usually give a spica. Right. And the first yeah, stage so, you did an abductor release also, no? I mean, yes, because abductor release because, because this it portion was not the going, this into the portion thing. was not going inside. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Maybe because of the head profile or because of the abduction contracture, things were yes. and we later realized that whatever correction we have achieved deteriorated further. We have achieved a valgus of 40 degrees and it deteriorated further on post operative yeah. You can see a slight loosening over here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, very good result. Yeah, Hitesh, what are your views on this? Yeah, this actually technique is described by Frazier for the osteopenic uh, bone, and he put with the two wires and to K wire is joined with the distal fragment with the SS and circulage wire. wire and circulage wire. So that is used for the uh, ost all osteopenic bone, and that we also use for the osteogenesis imperfecta, coxa vara, and fibrous dysplasia. Uh, whenever there is a good bone quality like this patient, and I try to what he said is correct. Uh, it works with the end to side. If you try to do it end to end. We cannot correct. Traditional plate cannot correct more than 40 to 45 degree. If we bend it, it will get correction up to the 45 degree. So the implant of choice is if patient is good, we can do about a locking compression plate. If it is not okay, we can do the condyler blade plate or it's very poor. I'm privileged to have an orthofix. I can put an uh, end to side plate with orthofix in poor case. Yes, sir. Okay. And Dr. Suresh Chand, what you will do at Lucknow? Okay, fine. Uh, he's not there. So let's, uh, uh, any any comment from the expert or shall we go to the second case? Yeah, I, I, sir, uh, I have a, a question. Uh, yeah, please. It's more of a question than a comment. So uh, so in this case, so what, what you guys aim, uh, how much of valgus do you aim in these cases? Like there is definitely, we are going to lose some amount of a deduction in these cases. So what's what will be your aim here? Are you going to match the neck shaft angle to the other side or like you compromise with some 30, 40 degrees of valgus? That's it. No, no. Uh, minimum target is 120 degrees because nothing is growing in the head section or trochanter initially fused, tried to fuse it. So, and we are not very sure about the growth rate. So we wanted to give him an adult configuration, but we couldn't achieve in the first go. 
second go also we had to limit ourselves to 135 degrees in the anticipation that some some of the valgus correction achieved at this stage will subsequently get lost over time okay it's like we match the next shaft angle on the other side slightly less dr nirmal okay so thank you you're limit you're limited then nirmal with your amount of because of abductor contracts like he said if you don't do an abductor release you won't get that much of contract correction mm -hmm. so the amount yeah. of free adduction that you have will be your valgus and like for first time he did with 40 degrees he said no yes so, and he so also it was basically two stage abductor. process yeah and he released the abductors to get a more okay. more correction the second time around okay excellent uh, congratulations dr anil uh, shall we okay. move on to the second case yes i have a final comment slide so the message from this case is that you with passing of time the choi boundary some become somewhat blurred what was originally 3a seem like a 2a and if previous records are not available the things can be classified either ways and when you look up such cases there is often multi directional deformity you must be prepared to protect them for long we have already discussed the choice of implant and take care of limb length discrepancy during your intervention because they significantly account for any kind of lurch and even taking care of limb length discrepancy will solve several of the parents apprehension thank you and we now move to the second case so this was the case yeah, and dr too. anil before that i have a question like uh, yeah. in response to your last uh, slide uh, or yes. the the case which you said that there was a change in the choice uh, classification from 3 yes. it came to 2 so yes do you suggest that we need to have it, uh, need to wait for few years before we uh, jump in for the surgical treatment it's not exactly like that uh, we have to see whether the infection has settled yeah no no infection is already not, settled we, we are not waiting for the choi type to establish we right. i okay. have several okay. examples to show in the subsequent cases where the intervention was uh, where the intervention happened much before the choi type established actually choi class choi has taken a criteria of 3 years to classify the case he did not explicitly mention it but Uh, he has taken a minimum three year follow up after the infection to classify his cases but when we look upon the recent literature now as soon uh, as recent as 9 months or 10 months after the initial infection the observers have labeled the sequelae so we don't have to wait for the choi type to establish choi type is just to help us identify the problems and plan accordingly okay point well taken very important thank you okay so uh, shall we move on to the next case sir yeah please yeah this is the second case okay i want you to take over sir okay so uh, basically the history is already mentioned do you uh, do you have a past radiograph or this is the first x ray we have at the time no, of this is that we have the first radiograph which we i will show subsequently but there is no tricks in this <laughs> this is whatever okay good it is good <laughs> yeah so That, like uh, yeah we have a, a fellows from chandigarh akash or dr khatri uh, who will be like uh, telling us about the problems and the options uh, good evening sir uh, sir based on the x ray given and the history this seems like a this uh, uh, There's a pseudo arthrosis or post septic sequela choi type three B with the pseudo arthrosis of the femoral neck and uh, coxa vera. Uh, the uh, the uh, we also in this case we'll need another view to properly uh, define the configuration of the proximal femur. Otherwise, uh, there's a pseudo arthrosis, there's a coxa vera, and I expect uh, and there's a limb length discrepancy of. 2.5 cm which i i think will be mostly because of the uh, reduced uh, neck shaft angle and the proximal migration of the greater trochanter 
and i would like to have, first check another view on the x ray and then also uh, check uh, whether the inf infection has settled or not and uh, uh, then uh, the problems here are uh, the limb length discrepancy and the the neck shaft angle and the pseudo arthrosis so so we'll have to uh, address all of them and uh, probably we might not be able to address all of them at one go and uh, in addition to that as uh, sir had mentioned previously we'll also have to see what are the secondary soft tissue contractures that have developed so in case we are planning uh, mostly we'll plan a valgus osteotomy so uh, we can do a uh, X-ray in uh, full adduction and uh, see uh, how the proximal femur looks like. And the other thing is uh, when we take the patient up uh, for surgery, I, I would also just uh, to properly define the femoral head, I would do an arthrogram and uh, then I'll plan mostly for a valgus osteotomy with a fibular graft if possible and uh, the length we can we'll address first we'll address the neck shaft angle and the length we can address subsequently means of whatever the remaining limb length discrepancy is there we can observe and we can address sub, uh, subsequently using other measures okay so your prescription is more of a valgus osteotomy uh, at this stage and a fixation with the fibular graft uh, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, I have. I, I don't know anything about the case. I just have a question or the concern. Whenever there is a pseudoarthrosis and patient has a good range of motion, the problem is like the movement, the good movement, which we call it, maybe at the pseudoarthrosis site. Mm -hmm. So if we fix the pseudoarthrosis, then patient may lose the good range which is has actually it's not a good range at the hip joint the good range may be at the pseudoarthrosis site so if that happens what would you do or to avoid that uh, problem what we can do preoperatively uh, we can take for sir to check where the motion is from we can uh, do like uh, abduction, adduction, and uh, rotation x rays uh, to check whether there is, uh, and even with the arthrogram, we can assess where is the motion actually coming from the joint or not. Okay, good. So basically, that's the important point. Like uh, either we look at uh, under IITV or we take uh, different views to ensure that from where the movement is coming. <clears throat> okay. So now, uh, Dr. Nirbalaj, what will be your uh, like uh, whatever uh, he says, Akash said, do you agree with this or you think something differently? No, I, I think Akash has covered uh, everything. everything. So there is pseudoarthrosis definitely. So we need a fibular graft in this case. And also there is a coxa vera. Uh, so okay. we have to do uh, an abduction osteotomy, a valgus osteotomy here. And uh, apophysitis for the trochanter. And uh, I think that 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 should be okay uh, at this point of time. Okay, and Akash, just a question: like uh, at uh, five years of age, what will be your method of fixation? Which implant you will consider? Uh, so we can uh, use uh, an uh, a pediatric angle blade plate or a, a pediatric hip plate, or if both of them are not available, we can also. Uh, uh, in dire situations, we can use a LCP, pre bend a LCP, and uh, we can also use it. Okay, right. Hitesh, what uh, are your views on the suggestions of Akash? Yeah, I agree that the valgus osteotomy with the fibula grafting is required in established arthrosis. But uh, I will take a call of either doing a MRI or adduction abduction view before I establish the arthrosis. Many times it will be non-ossified part of the neck, and that will be better visible with the MRI. So many times we can see that it is a continuity, but that is a cartilaginous part. So 
I will take adduction, abduction view, and the it's always always difficulty in the less than five years old. So it's not very easy to get the with even LCP on that. So we have done in very <clears throat> young child with the uh, end to side with wire also and put the spike. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. And uh, Dr. Thomas, what are your views on this? Yeah, I think I'll <clears throat> I'll do an adduction abduction view. But is this the type uh, 3A, uh, Anil, or have we agreed on the choice type here? Three, yes, choice type is 3B, sir. The 3B, first case okay. was just to stimulate okay. discussion, sir. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, Choi, Choi himself has said uh, 3 and 4 are difficult, and pseudarthrosis, getting the pseudarthrosis to unite is very difficult. Mm -hmm. So, I'll be a little careful, like a little uh, to do before 5, and the previous example he showed, that ossifying after some time, I'm a little tempted to wait on this patient if he's not functionally uh, doing too badly. Or do an MRI like Hitesh suggested and look at the status of the pseudarthrosis and the acetabulum before planning an osteotomy. And I, I don't, I prefer an iliac graft there to the fibula graft for a little more osteogenesis. So in our hands, I think the iliac crest graft has worked better than the fibula graft for the neck. So I might choose, but I may not jump in and do, do it straight away because below five, our results here have not been that great. Okay, that and the take. question is uh, about the fixation. Uh, should one uh, cross the physis or not? Physis is already... Uh, How will you fix? You say that uh, you will use... Uh, uh, like the implant. So how, what would be the fixation in the proximal if fragment? I, if I'm going to do the KYR, I'll put the end to side and from the one fragment proximal to distal fragment and I'll spare the physis if the physis is growing. Okay. And uh, what about uh, the another crazy idea of putting the screw in the upper part of the neck so that the growth modulation, um, the neck shaft angle gets corrected? That will only correct if there is no pseudoarthrosis. If there is a pseudoarthrosis, uh, the coxa vara will recur. No, no. We fix the pseudoarthrosis, but for the varus part, we okay. pass a screw in the upper part of the neck so that with growth, the neck shaft angle gets corrected. Yeah. the that the, According to the principal idea is correct, but it is not very popular. The reason is to proximal land is growing unpredictably then it's very less growth and second by putting on the lateral side screw medial is very popular for a caput valgum but caput vara or a coxa vara is not popular because in order to put technically laterally we may damage the vascular supply okay right that is the yeah. reason it's not popular okay good yeah uh, dr anil yeah we would like to see what you have done yes sir so, okay. So, uh, this is correctly identified as 3B pseudoarthrosis. Okay. So, the problem lies here in the connection between the head and the femur. Okay. According to our circuit. So, what are the management options for pseudoarthrosis? Either you observe, as, a doc as Dr. Thomas has rightly pointed out, or you can do femoral valgus osteotomy with bone grafting. Okay. So, uh, uh, briefly about this thing, uh, this is one of the rare septic sequelae, although every description has some patients with it, but even the well curated Joey description had just one case. Larger series till date has been Dr. Kanojas with 16 cases, and it has been reported practically in all classification like Hunka, which is type 3, or Joris, which is type 5. There can be different sites for this pseudoarthrosis, it can be just close to the neck region, close to the epiphysis when it is also known as physical slip. It is can be to the metaphysial neck region and it can also be close to the base of the trochanter. Before uh, uh, we go to uh, management part, I would like to share with the fellows, there are basically two mechanisms for its occurrence. The first is the 
whole joint is involved. It's a case of septic arthritis, the epiphysis, physis, and the metaphysis is involved. Your physis become, physis line becomes weak and slips over that. Okay, but all three portions are pathological. Okay, so this is basically a type 2 mechanism, but instead of a severe coxa vera, the physis slips from this point. Okay. The second mechanism is what the 3B actually is, is described in the manner that you have a weak neck, you have the physis is intact, the physial plate is intact, you have a pathological neck, which is osteomyelitic, which is weakened, and your uh, there is a pathological fracture which occurs through this zone, and you have a pseudoarthrosis type 3B, which is listed as the mechanism. Okay, but there is a gross difference between the type of pseudoarthrosis which results from these two different mechanisms. The type 1 mechanism is the inflammatory type in which the whole proximal portion of the femur is soft and pathological. The physis is, epiphysis is small. It remains small and degenerative. This is the situation which you were talking about that the movement occurs at the pseudoarthrosis site. The epiphysis is fixed in the acetabulum and the joint doesn't move, the pseudoarthrosis move. There is acetabular dysplasia. There are chances of hip subluxation. Reconstruction often fails as the implant does not hold and the head side is small. There is hypermobility at the fracture site and the case Choi described was probably of this type. The second mechanism is the better variety in which there is a viable head and the chances of reconstruction are better. So what are the various clinical and radiological features of pseudoarthrosis. The progressive coxa vera is the hallmark. And secondary, there can be trochanteric overgrowth and alterations of acetabular development. There can be variable limb length discrepancy ranging from 2.75 cm described by Konogia. In same cases, worsening to 25 cm. If the, if the type of pseudoarthrosis is type 1, pain and stiffness will appear early. So what are the controversies in management? Because there are, often it is not recognized as two mechanisms. So there are several controversies in the management. Uh, one ancient literature way back in 18, 1978 by Lawyer Roberts uh, pointed that it should be explored very early, just as soon as the infection is cusent. And if you find the joint dislocated, reduce it. If you find a pseudoarthrosis, fix it. Kanoji et al. has mentioned the age as 1.5 to 8 years and decide the duration according to the neck profile and angular correction. Joe et al. did at seven years in his case. Jori Saab uh, did, did not uh, uh, decide any age, but he observed coxa vera and he recommend when the coxa vera was approximately 90 degrees. Okay, so in his case, the intervention varied anywhere from four to 14 years of age. Okay. So how do we reconstruct? As rightly pointed out by various mentors and fellows, you can have valgus osteotomy, but some people have just tried close reduction and fibular grafting. Some simply valgus osteotomy, but the most common favored choice is close reduction, fibular grafting, and valgus osteotomy. And there can be several varieties of the valgus osteotomy. Other options when the mechanism particular is type one is accession of the head, and do a pelvic support osteotomy. And this option was utilized both by Hunka and Choi later in his series. But current trend has been to re try to uh, reconstruct the pseudoarthrosis once before embarking upon this option. So we will, uh, we will uh, learn something more about this valgus osteotomy. Despite everything, because there is a mixed literature, the success was achieved in less than 50% of the cases. With time, whatever valgus you achieve, there will be some loss. And sometimes it is said to be because of abnormal growth in the proximal femoral growth plates rather than the weak bone. Poor prognostic factors have also been pointed out when you operate a too young a child or too old a child. At the head is fixed mainly because of type 1 mechanism. And when you do not do a valgus osteotomy. So this is the particular case we were talking about. I will take you through the natural history so you have a fair idea of how things progress. This is a typical case drained at 
day 10 of life, you can see a subluxated hip and you don't know whether the head is dislocated or the neck is dislocated. So it was drained. You can see extensive osteomyelitis developing in the subsequent x-rays. This is a six months. Still, you can't appreciate whether the head is out or there is a slipping of neck. By one year of age, you get the correct picture. So as Dr. Dhiren was pointing at, when do you operate? Okay. So in this particular case, things are not clear till one year of age. Okay. So this child, all these are previous x-rays when the, the patient carried with him. So this is the subsequent x-ray, 1.5 years of age. You can see there is a worsening coxa vera. This is three years of age. The coxa vera is still worsened. And this is the x-ray I gave to fellows at this stage. The next shaft angle was 80 degrees. Okay. And we decided that according to all parameters, according to the jury sub and uh, whatever thing we must, and the neck profile is also good now, we must do a fixation at this stage. So we do not have, uh, this was the old case, we did not have MRI or abduction or reduction views as printed out by mentors. So we just did a valgus osteotomy, did a valgus uh, osteotomy distally at the trochanteric level and fixed with two K wires, okay? And put the child in spica, simple implant and simple fixation. Okay, this is at three months. Okay. So the osteotomy has united. This is follow-up of six months. Wire was removed at this time. Okay. You can see the head has started participating in the growth process and the acetabular has also started developing. This is at three years follow-up. The neck portion is solidly united, but the physis has also fused. Okay. This is at five years follow up. Okay. This is in April 2022. Okay. At age 12 years, the limb length discrepancy was still there and there was some deformity developing in the opposite knee joint. We don't know why. This is the gate video. Okay. At this stage, the parents complain that everything has now the hip is stable, the abduction, adduction is open. The patient can squat well, sit cross well, but there were problems with squatting. And the physis was already fused. So we decided to take up growth modulation at this stage. And this is the latest follow-up. Okay. Open to comments by mentors. Yeah, so the question is, uh, should we do anything for the neck length? There is a coxa breva. So, Nirvana, yes. uh, would we you consider doing did, anything? We, yeah, we, we didn't do anything because abduction and abduction was okay. And there was no complaint. I leave it to the mentors to guide us now. Dr. Nirvana, this is excellent result. Excellent result. So now when we have an excellent result, we always try to improve upon and do something better. So... Yeah. Like the result wise, this is excellent. The way the child was walking, this is superb. But still like every surgeon has a desire and particularly when we look at the x-ray, which is not uh, like uh, the proper neck length. Uh, will you do anything Nirbalaj, for this? Uh, have a fancy surgeries of uh, neck lengthening and all that. <laughs> Well, first of all, I should congratulate Dr. Anil for that excellent case. So uh, regarding your question, sir, like uh, we can go for a relative neck lengthening here to just to distillate the trochanter. So uh, we, I, I, we can give offer a relative neck lengthening to increase the, the, uh, the efficiency of the abductor mechanism. Otherwise, I think Dr. Anil has addressed the length inequality also by doing a growth modulation here. We have to wait and watch for that. So that, that, that will be my like suggestion. Yeah, Hitesh. Will you do anything to this child or like you are very happy with the result? It is good to have, but there is a coxa breva, as you mentioned that there is yes. an uh, trochanter is actually the high because neck is sh short and trochanter is high. So the abduction would be also not as great would be as the opposite side. So while taking out the implant, we can offer to the parents that we can do about trochanter. Uh, there was no implant, sir. There was no implant. 
No, no, all that is our habitual disease. Growth uh, modulation. The, yeah, it's a, that if the virus gets corrected, you have to have to remove the implants. So virus, yes. var, there is still there is one little virus. Oh. We have kept the implant for the growth modulation. Yes. Yeah, that I, that we have to take under the anesthesia. When you are taking under anesthesia, we can offer that time same time. Yeah, I am a bit apprehensive about doing multiple surgeries, although the x-ray is not anatomical, but once drained, second time operated for coxa vera, two surgeries already done in the hip region. When you go inside, things are not that good. So I try to settle for less. Yeah. If the function is good. Instead of, this is not a classical thing, uh, like a classical bones and infections can flare up any anywhere if you use anything, a more stronger implant. So I'm a bit hesitant in my practice. I use try to use a minimal implant in these cases. And I'm always worried about that type one mechanism. Yeah, Thomas, what is uh, your take on this? Yeah, I think it's a good result. Only thing uh, is the coxa brava and the abductor and the greater trochanteric overriding. So I'll probably think of a Mosher here, Mosher, Mosher osteotomy. Okay. Just to get the neck length and the trochanter down. Okay, good. So if uh, any question from the fellows before we move on to the third case, If you have a question, you can raise a hand and ask question. Okay, fine. Uh, let's move on to the third case. Now, looking okay. to the time, I think that we will be able to take the third case only. We will not discuss the fourth case in this uh, session. But uh, definitely, we will have a uh, next session soon uh, in next two or three weeks time or after the POSICON. But uh, uh, in the remaining time, we will discuss third case. Yeah, over to you, sir. Okay, sir, uh, before we close this case, there is a final comment for the uh, take-home message, basically. So, there can be concomitant septic arthritis and osteomyelitis in several of our hip cases. The dissociative physis can be viable. It can grow despite dissociation and fixation with fibular graft. Pseudoarthrosis have a tendency to worsening coxa vera. Intervention can bring about a significant change in the natural history of sequelae hip. As you can see, now it's no more a 3B. Okay, so the type has changed. And serial follow-ups are needed. Secondary intervention may be needed as pointed out by that you might require a correction for limb line discrepancy as well as coxa breva. Okay, so with that, I move on to the next case. So this was case three in a nine-month-old child. And the child had a uh, basically neonatal infection and now this is at nine months all signs of infection has now subsided and this child had my multifocal infection and the elbow was also involved okay over to you sir yes so now i request the fellows from cmc to uh, say what needs to be done so first of all what are the likely problems how will you investigate this child further? And what are the options for management? Yeah, who will be participating from CMC Velour? Uh, Arul, Arul, are you there? Ah, yes, sir, I'm here, sir. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah so please. We'll so in this X-ray, so in this X-ray, we can see the left side of the Arul, we can't hear you. Neck profile in the, in the right side. And also in the left side, uh, 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 we can see that uh, there is no neck and Arul, because he has probably an internet problem. Hello, sir. Uh, I'm audible, sir. Now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, please. Sir, in, in the left side, uh, we can see the sentence line is operated in the left side, sir. Uh, and uh, there is a uh, ossific nucleus of the left side uh, 
uh, femoral head is not seen in the left side and even the acetabulum in the left side is not developed as compared to the other side so even at the right side uh, we can see that is slight subluxation of the uh, femoral head in the left side uh, that might be because of uh, uh, external rotation view so first of all i would like to take a proper uh, x ray in uh, 15 degree of internal rotation and neutral uh, neutral abduction adduction so uh, so that will characterize the neck in the left femur and if any ossific nucleus which is there it might be uh, the end on view which is there in the left side can be seen okay so after and so like yeah uh, will you go for ultrasound or mri instead of yes, that uh, definitely definitely i will i will take for a mri sir because the age is more than 96 okay. months so uh, ultrasound is useful up, up to only 6 uh, months so after 6 months uh, there will be some bone formation of ossific nucleus there can be echoes uh, in the ultrasound so definitely i will like to take an mri on this case so there can be three possibilities sir one can be absence of the femoral head and neck the other can be coxa magna in which the uh, uh, cartilage will be seen but that will be very big that cannot be fitted into the acetabulum and the third possibilities can be the normal looking femoral head and acetabulum that can be fitted in so we have to uh, plan the management after doing a mri okay so uh, doing anything uh, you will wait for uh, first of all uh, get the mri done and then you will proceed and uh, will you okay. proceed at 9 months of age for the surgical the treatment or you will wait for few more months the head is dislocated sir so okay so you would like to MRI. yeah uh, go in as as early as possible very good yeah, yeah, yes, sir. fine yes, sir. yeah good thank you so now uh, we take the uh, mentor's opinion uh, dr nirbal raj what will you uh, like what your comments on uh, arul's uh, perspective about this case or the suggestions from arul yeah i would definitely like to know what's happening with the capital physis as it is not visualized and uh, definitely there is it's uh, it's lying outside as seen in the radiograph so we have to go for either a mri or an orthogram as dr anil pointed out uh, orthogram in these cases is not uh, uh, as as easier as it is done in developmental dysplasia i agree with them we have to go for an mri in this case and in mri if you are able to visualize a uh, uh, capital physis then uh, we have to plan for an open reduction in this case i agree with them what arul was saying yeah okay and uh, just i have a question like there is something calcification is seen near the greater trochanter so what is that sir uh, um, i think that we have to have another view here actually we have to uh, get an internal rotation view i am not sure about the calcification in this um, thing uh, maybe the remnant of the ne neck which is on the limb is externally rotated so it's overlapping i am um, not sure about that good yeah hitesh what do you think yeah that is uh, uh, whatever the arun says is correct i also agree with nirmal raj but i am worried for the opposite side also because opposite side is also the median joint space is more and uh, even though the epiphysis looks uh, the ossified but there is a acetabular dysplasia and there is uncoverage also on the opposite side coming to the left side what he said is correct depends on the ossific nucleus is present or where the epiphysis is there what is the seeing the overlying shadow it may be irregular femoral head irregular epiphysis or the uh, disorganized or not oriented normal epiphysis also may be present okay good and uh... about the suggestions of arul about the management getting the mri done and then uh, proceeding further yeah do you agree with that or you will uh, suggest some different yeah. investigation if there is a mri is present mri the ossific nucleus is present we can go ahead and do the reduction because that the growth of the femur and acetabulum depends on the first first year so i don't wait if it is present but if it is absent then there is a big challenge okay good let's uh, proceed for the yeah dr anil what was the mri picture or like have okay. you got 
sir may i add something yeah please dr suresh please sir uh, i think uh, the practicality of mri at 9 months and the interpretation of that is sometimes doubtful so uh, i think arthrography option should be additional uh, during uh, ot to to uh, uh, delineate further the uh, i mean stability as well as the remnant head no that's uh, a very good point but like uh, dr anil said in his initial lecture that in many of these patients the capsule may be damaged or scarred and because of that arthrography may not be reliable the second point is like even arthrography also needs in uh, sorry anesthesia so yeah. so like in mri also we are worried about the anesthesia part but here also arthrography we need to give anesthesia so that part of the mri or that negative point of mri is already um, not very relevant for the arthrography point of view but let's yeah, see I... what dr anil did yeah please any any further comment yeah please uh, sir i have to stop share and then start again it's hang okay yeah dr suresh you were uh, like saying something no i was saying sir intraop only you just take arthrography and then proceed with whatever the findings are there for arthrography uh, in addition to mri probably uh... right yeah. right so uh, basically yeah we get the mri done but uh, before uh, proceeding for surgery uh, we carry out the arthrography also yes okay yeah. so yes. can i proceed sir yeah please Hello. please okay so as correctly point out there was head present in this so we classify this as 4a okay the problem here remains of articulation of head within the acetabulum so these are the treatment options for 4a okay if there is a reasonable head present you go for open reduction with or without femoral osteotomy if the head is not present you do a supervised neglect for some time compensate for limb line discrepancy and after 6 years you decide whether you want to do a pelvic support osteotomy not at the earliest age that is possible so in this particular case the diagnosis was clearly established there was no confusion regarding that it was a post septic case although we sometimes see without this hint so we have several ddh which later came out to be septic in the operative room and this was very nicely picked out by the fellows that this side is also abnormal okay so as uh, we went for mri okay and we could see a reasonable size cap present in various sections both in the sagittal as well as coronal sections okay so where we went in for open reduction okay but as often happens the head size did not match with the acetabular side so in this particular case we have to fix the open reduction with two k wires okay this was done at the age of 9 months because we wanted to have wanted the head to be inside as soon as possible so this is 3 months post op operative wires were removed still head was not present okay but you can see that the alignment of the femur is uh, matching corresponding to the acetabulum at 6 months post operative this side started deteriorating but this side became stable and you can see slight development of the acetabulum this is one year post operative the head has developed there was some beaking over here okay and we could estimate that some cap must be present over here but this side started subluxating this is two years post operative okay that acetabulum developed better this is three years post operative still cap not developed this is the child and if he was young and agile okay you can see this walking okay and this time the left side was stable enough and painless so this is in december 2019 5 years post operative the cap had still not developed and only a small shadow of articular cartilage was visible and this side has subluxated we advise surgery at this time and but then covid came this child was lost to follow for 3 years okay so the child came recently and this is the 
clinical picture at this such stage the walking the child had gained weight also high the walking had become difficult both side had become painful and there was severe abductor lurch originating from both sides okay these were the radiographs the besides the right side the left side was now throwing crepitations and on adduction it subluxated and telescoping was positive um this was the um, shall i stop sir yeah so what i was thinking is like this is really interesting and we really need to discuss this case at length because there are so many things so my suggestion is that uh, we have already uh, completed our time so let's uh, stop at this point or pause at this point and we will continue in the second session from this case onwards is it okay okay great, great sir great yeah okay okay thank you everyone for a wonderful comments and a fellow i will share again. i will i will share this final radiographs in the group sir yeah exactly so we we can continue the discussion on this case further yes yeah i will announce the further uh, the date for the next session very soon uh, once i get uh, the convenience of uh, dr anil agrawal and all other our experts so thank you once again for really active participation fellows and from the experts and uh, 